Hello, I'm Dr. Phil Harris, and today I'd like to talk about the internal rate of return. What is it? How do you use it? And how do you calculate it? Well, let's start by looking at a typical capital budgeting problem, which I have laid out here on an Excel spreadsheet. And we start with this discount rate, which is also known as the WACC, or the Weighted Average Cost of Capital. And what that is, that's the cost of the mix of debt and equity it takes to raise the money in order to do the project. So in our case, it's 14% here. So that's what it costs to raise the money to do this project. That's our internal rate. And if we have an initial investment of $853, you can see that's money going out. That's at time zero, which means today, um, that's what we have to invest to get these other positive cash flows for the next seven years. So in Excel, it's quite simple to solve in an internal rate of return problem. You simply click on this function box and it opens up another box and it asks you to search for a function. And what you would ordinarily do is type in IRR, click go. And since it came right up, I didn't have to do that. You simply highlight IRR and click OK. And now it's asking you to put something in as a value here. And what you want to do is you want to put all your cash flows, both positive and negative, in that box from C5, that's your cell reference, to C12, C7, or C12, excuse me. And here's all your cash flows just as they are here in your spreadsheet. And then out here, it gives you a fractional value which is 0 0.23089 and down here it gives you a percentage 23.09 percent which is our internal rate of return so all we have to do is click OK and voila it's in our cell so that's what it is and then if we want to really know what's going on here I want to take you through the calculation in Excel first and then we'll write it out uh, so what we have to do is we have to come up here and we have to find the present value of all these cash flows. Well, the value, we know the value of $853 today is $853, but we want to be a little more sophisticated and put it in a formula. So we start out by using our equal sign, and then we're going to multiply this, and to multiply we use the asterisk, and we're going to take that times 1 plus um, some rate, and we'll use this for right now, which is our discount rate. And we want to anchor that because we, as we, as we copy this, it's gonna, it'll move it down unless we tell it to anchor. So we have to put a dollar sign in in front of it in Excel. So let's do that, both before the letter and the number. Otherwise, it allows allows one or the other to slide. And you don't want to do that. So you come to the end here, close out your parentheses, and now you want to raise this to a power. But we don't want a future value, we want a present value. And a present value is going to be minus this value over here, or this number over here. Okay, so let's put that in. And you can see our present value is the same today as what we started out with. Now let's copy this to the other seven cells below. And paste. There we go. And this is just what I would expect because a present value is always going to be less than some amount in the future because it's worth less today than it would be in the future. So you can see that's true in each of these cases and it gets progressively worse less as time goes on. So we have present values now for all of these um, future cash flows. And I want to do one other thing here. Let's add these all up. So we'll highlight these all, and then we'll do an auto sum, and that gives us the sum of our negative and positive cash flows. Well, what is that number anyway? 
Okay, and that's our, our net present value. That's really what it is. So it's positive. And we know from our decision rules that any time we have a positive net present value, we want to accept the project. However, that's not what we're trying to solve here. We're trying to get to this number. And um, we're going to do it using an iterative process which means it's a, a little bit by trial and error. And so we know that at 14%, we've got this positive. So if this is higher, we're going to get a lower net present value. So we want to change our discount rate. Let's say we try 20% just to do something even. Okay, it's a little better because now we're less positive. We went from 264 to 77, but we're still not at zero. So let's try 25%. Okay, there we go. Now we're negative. But we're still not at 23.09%. So we, we'll, get, we'll just guess. Well, we already know it's 2309%. So why don't we just put 23.09 in and we'll see what we get. There you go. You get 0.01 and it's simply rounding and I wouldn't worry about that too much because if you carry these decimals out, that would go away. But anyway, that's what we're aiming for, a net present value of zero. That's what the internal rate of return is by definition. It's the rate of return where your cash inflows equal your cash outflows in present value terms. And that's exactly what we did here. So let's write out that formula. Let me grab my um, ink pen. And we're going to write out the formula that we just used to solve this equation. And what it is, it's the sum of all the cash flows from 0 to n divided by one plus an internal rate of return from zero to the nth power. And that's exactly what we just did in our formula. And let me change colors here a second. We're really solving for this figure in our formula right here. So that's what we're aiming for. We're trying to come up with what that number is, what that discount rate is to get our net present value equal to zero. And I don't have that down here, so let me put it here. So this whole thing has to come out to zero, which is our net present value. And that's what we're trying to get at. The zero net present value. Okay, so the reason why I I did something earlier and I wanted to explain it to you, and let's do it down here. So future value equals the present value um, times one plus r some rate to the nth power. Okay, the present value equals the future value times 1 divided by 1 plus r to the nth power. Another way of writing that, and I can do it over here, right here, the present value equals the future value times 1 plus r to the minus n. That's the same as the, as the formula before, except it's easier to insert into Excel, and that's why we used it. And uh, 
again, if the discount rate would have been 14% like we started out with, the internal rate of return was 23.09%, so if our cost of capital was 14%, we would accept the project because we're going to earn more than what it cost us to raise the money. So that's the internal rate of return decision rule. And I hope you learned a lot from this video and found it informative, and we'll see you in the next slide. Thank you.